Uh, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like at a clock. And I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Um, I'm coming here from the bathroom because I live in a small apartment and there's way too many people around. It's the only place I can find privacy. You can change that, though, by hitting the subscribe button and the bell and make, making me a YouTube sensation, of course, and then I can find better, a more appropriate environment for such videos. So we all win. We all win. Um, I got a letter here from Bob Ballard from Pixie, New Hampshire, who says, how did you, how do you know how all the things that you know? Like, he, for instance, I said that I, the Flames were likely going to miss the playoffs this year. Uh, the San Jose Sharks were going to miss the playoffs this year. And um, the Buffalo Sabres would win and Minnesota would likely lose. Well, first of all, it's early. I could be incorrect. Not likely, but I could be incorrect. Secondly, um, I do visual meditations and um, get plenty of massages, lots of naps, up to 10 to 12 naps a day I find is best for um, being able to predict games and what's going to happen in the future in the NHL. I find that works out best. So there's not too many people that are, are, are committed enough to put their best forward for that type of uh, lifestyle. So, this is what I bring to you, boys and girls. Okay, let's look at a few things that I want to talk about uh, yesterday. Uh, the Wild. I watched the Wild yesterday, uh, and they lost against Pittsburgh, and they looked horrible. Blow that team up. You don't need to wait till the trade deadline, for the love of God. Stall just, uh, everybody. Just... Everybody that's over 27, trade them off. It's going to be a rebuild. It's going to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be painful, but it's got to be. It's going to be more painful if you hold on to them than if you don't. Um, what else did I see here? I saw the uh, Flames also, secondary scoring. I, I said the Flames are going to miss the playoffs if they don't get secondary scoring. Backland, from Backland down their lineup, they're all third liners or fourth liners, and you just can't have that. You got one, you got four number one uh, first line players on that team: Monahan, Goudreau, Lindstrom, or Lindholm, and Kachuk. After that, the at least other forwards, they're all third line players. You need to package them together and get a second line going there, uh, or it's going to be difficult for them. Um, uh, so anyways, let's get into our picks from last night. Those are just the two things I noticed from last night's games. There's probably more. I should bring up Edmonton going 5-0. It's amazing what happens when you get a coach that can create an environment. I don't think, I think Hitchcock would have been able to do so as well if he would have started at the right time of the season. Um, but, I mean, look at what McClellan's doing in L.A. So why does it work one I mean, it's early in L.A. too. I don't think L.A. is going to make the playoffs. Uh, but the difference is Tippett is a genius, period. He always created, an, and that's really what coaches do. They create environments for teams to play. Did you ever notice where some coaches, they go somewhere and the goaltender is always great, and then some, goal, some coaches just can't seem to get anything out of their goaltenders? And people will say, well, you know, uh, coaching depends on your goaltender. I'll, uh, a good, show me a good coach and I'll show you a good goaltender. Well, I'll say, show me a good coach and I'll show you a goaltender that's getting, a, that's doing the best he possibly can because that coach creates an environment for goaltending. Goaltending is psychological, very psychological. And um, psych, a psychological well-being has a lot to do with the environment you're in and that is created. Um, and coaches, good coaches, just tend to be able to create the perfect environments for goaltenders. That's what I. Okay, that's enough about last night. And Tippett does that. Um, Penguins versus the Jets. Uh, I am going to take the Jets here 4-2. I'm actually talk about creating environments. I'm really impressed with what Sullivan is doing with that Pittsburgh team with four of their top four 
to of their top six forwards out, especially with Malkin, of course, uh, right now. And the team just keeps on winning, which is very impressive. I don't think they will do so with the Jets. And I'll give credit to Paul Maurice as well. Uh, with Bufflin being gone and Myers leaving and so on, they have a, a fairly nondescript defense, although Morrissey is taking it another notch this year. Holy shit, does he look good. Now, I think that Brassois is going to be in the net for the Jets. I do not bet this game if I'm you. I'm taking the Jets 4-2, but I'm not sure I would bet this game. Uh... Hullabuck was the main reason why they were winning, and he was playing fantastic. We'll see what Brassois can do tonight against a Jets team that's fairly, or a Penguins team that's fairly depleted. I still think they pull it out 4 2. That's it. That, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Knights versus the Kings. Again, there's another team. Like I just said, McClellan is making the Knights look pretty good early. Or, the, sorry, the Kings look pretty good early. I don't think that's going to hold up. Um, I watched the Knights last night too. I uh, can't remember who they were playing now. Was it Calgary? Calgary, yeah. And they just trounced them. Um, they're playing on a back to back, but so are the Kings. The Quick's going to be in that. He's been struggling since he started having injury after injury. Um, I believe Subban will be in that for the Knights, but it doesn't seem to matter with them. I would, I would take the over on this, and I would say like 6-4 or something like that. I, th that's just what I feel. It's what I feel inside, boys and girls, and that's the main thing. It doesn't matter what's in your head. It's what you feel. Go by feelings. See how that works out for you. Uh, flames versus Sharks. Uh... After seeing after seeing a back to back and seeing the Flames play last night, uh, they it's like they know they don't have enough scoring, and that's the worst part. When your team has a feeling that you can't score, you're probably right. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that whether you think you can or can't, can't you're you're correct. Well, I think that's what's happening with, with uh, the Flames right now. Uh, Talbot is going to be in that. I don't know what he's going to bring. I know what he brought to the Oilers, and it wasn't very good. So now, again, we're talking about creative environments here. Uh, however, mm, Sharks have not looked good so far this season. Two did win their last game, looked actually very good. I think it was Chicago they played, and they came back and won, won again. It feels like there's a spark under them now. Um, I'm going to take, and I do believe it's going to be Jones in that. I think I'm going to take the Sharks here, and I'm going to say 3-2. Uh, I think I had 3-2 for the Sharks. And that's all I got for you today, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. It's my full 42%. If I had more than 42, you, it would be all to you, because you are my favorites. Every one of the I have every one of you on my fridge, and I get and I giggle and frolic every day at the sight of you. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.